Today, we are playing chapter two in the Legend of the Sea Robbers expansion. And this chapter is called The Attack. So, make sure that you have played chapter one because there are things in chapter one that move into chapter two. Specifically, if you remember the castaway tokens, you had to gather castaways, and those were those tiny little tokens, and you flipped them over, and if you had those resources, it was yours, you put it under your settlement, and then that gave you a, a, an ore miner, right? So depending on how many castaways your group got in chapter one, that will represent how many of these tokens you get during this game. So these tokens are called Bog Iron Tokens. These tokens go on top of every pasture hex. Now, because we gathered eight castaway tokens. Our group is going to be playing with four bog tokens on each pasture hex. Now, what these bog iron tokens do, if you build a settlement on this pasture, and a six is rolled, you may choose to get a sh one sheep, or you may choose to take a rock. If you choose to take a rock, you just remove one of the bog iron tokens, it leaves the game, and you're allowed to do that three more times on that hex. Now, if you have a city, on there. There's two different options. You may get two sheep or you can choose to get one sheep and one rock. You may not under any circumstances choose two rock. Okay so just remember every time you take advantage of getting a rock from the pasture remove one of the bog iron tokens. So that is a limited feature. I'm going to push this to the side. And that explains the bog iron tokens. Next up, friends. We know friends. They were in chapter one. There are four new friends, however. So they are a little bit different than chapter one. Move them over. The next thing you're going to see is these tokens in front of me. Now, I'm gonna zoom in here because it is very important there are two different kinds, even though they look the same. This, These six here have two people on them, and these ones here have three. And these are called gold field tokens. I will explain the gold field tokens once the board is set up because it will make more sense then. However, what I will explain is on the back of these tokens are pictures of gold. That represents how much gold you win. And that is kept track of on this board here. So if I were to flip over this, and I'll show you how to do that once the board is set up, and I'm red, I would move three spaces. One, two, three. Three. If you pass or land on a chit, you take a chit from the collection and that is one victory point. Right here, you will see Niala, the diplomat, the first person to get to her, land on or pass, receives her friend card. So that person could have, would have, two friend cards for the game. Everything else is the same from chapter one with a few extra 
gold mines, a few extra edge pieces. So we're gonna set up the board and then we'll unpause it and I will explain more about the gold field tokens. looks like set up. We have our bog iron tokens on each of the pastures. For us it's four because of chapter one. A couple things to mention. You are using the ships from the Seafarers expansion, however you only use five. So just like chapter one, it's a limited number of ships. In this game, these little units here are gold miners. Okay, So, just like in chapter one, you're going to build your ships out to the gold island. Once you reach here, you're going to build your outpost. That would be removed because I touched it. Once you build your outpost, you get to choose a friend, but not Niala the Diplomat. She's only given away with the progress board. Once you have your outpost out there, you may build gold miners. So you build a gold miner right here with a rock and a sheet. Then what you can do is with one wheat, you can move your gold miner three places. So I would go one, I'm gonna stop there. And then maybe red comes on out here. And they have an ore miner, or gold miner in this one, sorry. They can move him three, so they're going to move one, two, three, and they're with me. This gold field token has two people on it. That means as soon as there are two gold miners at this intersection, this token will be flipped over. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that just to show everybody. It's two gold. So that means, over here on the progress board, blue and red would move ahead two spaces. Now, out here, there are three people on the gold mine. So let's say they get out here, and as an example, I'm going to put, you need three gold miners there, because there's three people on those tokens. Again, you go flip it over. It's three gold. Red would move ahead three spaces on the progress board. Blue, however, would move ahead six because they have two gold miners. So you move ahead that many spaces per gold miner that you have at that 
intersection. And like I said, the progress board, if you pass or land on the Catan chits, you grab a Catan chit from the supply, that's an automatic victory point. The first person to land on or pass Niala the Diplomat gets that friend card as well as the friend card that they would have gotten from their outpost. Don't forget, the person whose turn it currently is would move first on the progress board. So, for example, if red was here and blue was here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, technically you would both get to Niala right when you flip that over. But the person who would move first is the person whose turn it is. So if it was red's turn, they would be on the bottom and therefore they would get the Niala card. This game goes up to 12 victory points, and that's it. Don't forget there's treasure chests, that's from chapter one. I'm gonna return our gold miners here to their original places. We're going to show you the route to set up. So each of us will roll to see who's going to go first. Blue's out of five. Blue's going to place first, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to place a settlement on the harbor, or on the coast, so it's one of those gray tokens. After blue, red will go, and then orange, and then orange will place a second settlement anywhere on the mainland, followed by red. followed by blue, and then blue will place a third settlement somewhere else on the mainland. Followed by red, followed by orange. After orange has placed the settlement, they will place two roads and a ship. Followed by red. Followed by and that's the order of placement for this game. So we're gonna go ahead and play, and let's see who wins.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He had nine, ten for longest road, eleven, twelve for largest army, and then as a bonus, he had a victory point from the development cards. Now, a couple things that I'm going to point out, and I'm going to put it in the blog as well. Um, number one, I'm not sure why, but Isa the ship builder. She's absolutely useless in this chapter. Um, you can't, after you build the outpost, you can't move the boats. Um, and you can't build any more ships because you've used all five. So our recommendation is actually to replace her with Olaf from chapter one. The other thing that we wanted to point out was we only got four of the gold fields flipped over. So therefore we didn't really get far along on this um, progress board. I would almost recommend taking out the longest road. Um, keep in the largest army because you have development cards, but take out the longest road. Because dad didn't even have to make it onto the progress board. He built an outpost, but he didn't even build any gold miners. So those are our two recommendations for this game. Let's see what chapter three brings. Keep playing and have fun. <laughs>